let us look at something called as an image sampler which is available in params input image sampler how can this help us in creation of a design i have created something earlier which i'll be redoing it now look at this image it is because of this image that i have been able to generate small circles which dependent on some property of this image create the design on the surface now to achieve this let us first choose an image i'm going to choose this particular image the first and foremost thing you need to know about this image is the dimensions the width and the height of this image if you observe this is currently 1100 by 823 pixels so if i want to create a surface i need to ensure that the surface is also 1100 by 823 in size now this particular image may be too big for me hence i would want to scale it down because it may not be as per my dimensions let's scale it down to maybe 0.1 so right now if i observe this is 110 by 82.3 which suits me fine let's complicate the matter slightly and not keep this surface flat for the moment i'm simply going to bend it and nothing more actually let's bend it in both directions we don't have a simple surface let me rebuild it with less number of points yeah this looks good so here we have a surface which is not flat and i'm going to be creating a design as per this image onto this surface let's start with grasshopper first thing pull the surface into grasshopper i can hide the surface for the moment in rhino the surface has a certain width and length of the edge to identify it i'm first going to go into surface analysis deconstruct prep so that i get the edges of the prep i need to know the curve lengths so if i take curve length i got four answers i don't need four i need only the first two or the last two so i can simply go into sets take cull pattern where the pattern false false true true is going to give me two values the first of the width and the height to this value i'm going to be breaking down the surface into n number of small parts which means i need surface util isotrim for that i need a domain divided by 2 so i'll go to math i'll take divide domain this is my surface by default it is 10 and 10 i need these two to be separated out so to separate it out i can go into sets list take list item where because this is zero i'll get the first output out similarly i can take another list item where i can be set to 1 so my answer of 82 comes here and 110 comes here alternatively with the new grasshopper i can simply say insert parameter so i have got 0 here and i have got 1 here so within the same item i have got both the answers i can put the first one in u and the second one in v 
and you will see that I have got so many subdivisions 9020 subdivisions however this is too much for me I don't need so many so what we can do is using these lengths I can divide the lengths actually let me do it before I bring the, bring the items out so I'll divide let's say by one for the moment just to show you the feedback and then as I change this to 10 you will see that the unit surface has become 10 units if I had said 5 it's 5 and hence the number of divisions that happen for the surface reduce so initially it was 9020 if I had made it 10 they would have become only 88 divisions whereas if I say 5 it is giving me 352 divisions I'm going to leave it at this for the moment and for every surface I'm going to ask for a centroid to achieve that I'll go to surface analysis area and I got the area centroid on each of this centroid I want a circle so the first step is to create a simple circle where the radius has to be half of this size whichever size we take so let me go to math division let's make this 2 initially the base plane is xy as you can see so even if I just feed in xy plane here this becomes the initial plane this circle needs to be placed on each of these subsurfaces I cannot simply move them if I simply move them move out circles in which direction so I need a vector from this point to each of these centroids which I can typically take using vector two points where this is the initial place and this is the final I move it I got circles everywhere but you will see that the circles are horizontal they are not in line with the plane of the individual subsurfaces that's why move will not work however we can orient these circles to orient the circles it asks for base geometry which is a circle it will ask for the source plane so I'm attaching the simple XY plane and then it asks for a target plane we currently do not have a target plane at every individual centroid to achieve that like we had done earlier I'm going into surface evaluate surface to evaluate the surface at each of these centroids I will first need to bring the each of those points onto the surface so I'll put the centroids onto surface closest point for this surface the UV points can go in surface evaluation and these new normals will be the basis of the new plane the planes are going to be the centroids with normals attached to the surface evaluation these new planes will now be attached to orient and I have got my circle attached or on the on each and every individual subsurface in its exact plane 
If I look at this from top view, you will see that all the circles are currently uniform. These are in uniform size because we have given them a single radius. However, we now need to introduce the image onto this script. So let's go to params input and take image sampler. This image sampler will get the inputs from the centroids and it has three main things that you need to modify. The first is the image itself. So let's take this image. Then I need to choose whether I want to clamp it, tile it, flip it, what. I'm going to choose tile right now because I have taken exactly the same size. It's going to come here itself. Then let me just filter it and I'm going to take, give me the value, brightness of it. And then I'm going to say in settings, I'm going to feed in the domain. This is very essential. So in this domain, I'm going to, I know that I had started from 0 to 110 and this was 82.3. So my domain is 110 to 82.3. Right now I'm just doing it very approximately. And you will see that I have, I had 352 centroids and now I have 0 to 351 which means 352 values. These values if I take the bounds will tell me are between 0 to 1. So I have 352 values which are between 0 to 1. I am going to scale each one of these circles according to the values that have been given out using this image which means I need to go to transform scale. I can take uniformly but I don't want uniformly I need a non-uniform scale. Why? Because I don't want to scale it in the z direction. First is what is the base geometry? So I'm going to place all my curves in the base geometry. Let me hide the preview of all this. Then it asks for the base plane. We have already ascertained the base plane so I can feed it in here. Then it asks me for the scaling factors. I can just feed this in. Z I don't want to scale. And you will see that it has started taking the shape of my object. You will see that there are no circles here. That's because wherever there was a zero, it has come in as no circles. What if I don't want it from zero to one? What if I want it from, let's say, 0.2 to 0.8 only? So in this case, I use a command called as remap numbers, where V stands for the values to remap. So the values to remap are here. Then it asks for a source domain, which is nothing but my bounds. And then it asks me for a target domain. So let's say I target it to make it 0 0.2 to be the least sized circle. And let's make the maximum sized circle 0 0.8. It's up to you. How do you want to make it? These remapped values, if I feed it in X and Y, you will start seeing that you have list size 0.2, maximum size 0.8. Now let's change some of these settings and see how it affects my circles. If I had gone to settings and I say give me the channel, which means color, more or less everything is there. If I say only red, if I say only green, if I say only blue, if I say you, saturation, and brightness which I had initially taken. If I happen to 
change the value of the original unit which was 5 and I make it divided by 1 you will see that you are getting a much finer design maybe I'll make it to 2 see if I change this setting I want to show you what is the importance of domain. If I happen to take this surface and instead of placing it from 0 to 110 and 82.3, if I happen to align it, concentric, 0 enter, you'll see that my object is styling. If I had said only clamp, you would get design only in this area. If I had said flip, it would have come on this side. Now, if I happen to tile it, but you see that it is not giving me the answer the way I would want it, it is because of the domain. This surface, if I go to ordinate point and check it out, is sitting at 40.35 and 54.16 so I'll go to settings and change this to minus 54.16 to 54.16 and y to minus 40.35 to 40.35 You'll see that I've again started getting the correct answer. Observe this small area here. You'll see that it is enhancing this part too. So on the basis of this, you can create any kind of, you can create any kind of designs. I had happened to take a circle. But you could instead take a polygon, a sphere or any other object of your choice depending on the logic you want to use for the image sampler.